Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com uh, nightly rapid show. Uh, happy Monday. Happy Monday everybody. Hope everybody had a great uh, weekend. So let's talk about it. Number one, uh, if you thought uh, the market was very, very slow this morning, uh, especially the first you know, 40 minutes of the day, half hour, 40 minutes of the day, you're probably not alone. Uh, there was a, a huge uh, latency issue, uh, pretty much streetwide. Doesn't matter pretty much what, what broker you're using. Uh, quotes were slower, everything was slower. So if you thought something was wrong with your system or your internet connection, just understand it was pretty much everywhere. Um, and that kind of really did a good favor for the, for the, for the bulls. Let me explain to you why. I, I think the market today, the, the bulls did a phenomenal job. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, if you guys remember, uh, in the weekend update, I was definitely sell side going into today's session. I, I felt that uh, the market was so easily taking down without any effort. And by the time we uh, looked at the end of the scoreboard towards the end of the week, we saw you know pretty steep declines, right? Um, and the only question was, well, if we're going to get a gap up today and we go red, can the bears sustain? the lack of aggression towards the end of the week that we saw by the bulls. Instead, we got the opposite. We got uh, a pretty big gap down. We were down, you know, six, 700 points uh, pre-market today. And the bears really had a shot today. I mean, really, really, if, if there was any day that they had a shot to really put their claws in the bulls or their foot on the bulls neck, this was the day. Uh, they had a really good shot of a gap down and dump, whatever you want to call it, and they didn't do it. And I believe because of the latency issues on so many different platforms uh, this morning, I think a lot of traders didn't feel the need to kind of trust because they didn't trust their platform, whether the quotes are coming up slow, or they weren't getting quotes at all. A lot of people kind of stood on the sidelines. And what happened was the bulls slowly but surely saw there was no fear. And the one thing that they did, which was incredibly important, they started moving up, right? Slowly but surely. First, he started seeing, for example, uh, the stay-at-home plays. Uh, Zoom got a little bit better pre-market. Um, you had uh, Netflix get a little bit pre-market. You had Tesla with the initial sell-off pre-market got a little bit better. You saw Amazon getting a little bit better. And then slowly but surely, you saw an incredible push to the upside. Uh, you talk about, I think it was like a 400 point difference from bottom to top uh, on the NASDAQ, you know, incredibly impressive. And the worst part the, the Bears did was they dropped, they completely fumbled the ball, completely uh, fumbled the ball today. And not only did they let the Bulls reclaim this rising 20 day support that we talked about uh, last week, they reclaimed the 10 day moving average as well. And eh, an inch away from reclaiming the five. And again, if you believe that the five day moving average like I do is the shortest term sentiment, again, if you're short, you know, if you're short overnight tonight, well, let's see, you know, let's see what, you know, let's see what, what kind of good human being you are. Because again, everything tells us guys that uh, going into tomorrow's session is incredibly bullish. You see a lot of names that really fought hard uh, to keep from getting a lot of technical damage, like a Tesla, for example, like an Amazon, for example, uh, like a Zoom and a Beyond and, and, and Apple and NVIDIA, they all reclaimed. They, they really all reclaimed. And you know it's gonna be a very, very tough job uh, for the bears to seize control. Because again, if you couldn't get the market down on an aggressive 600 point decline from last week's selling, okay, that, that nobody defended prices, you let the bulls get some, you know, you let the bulls get a little bit of breath. And like any good boxer, right, any professional boxer that's getting hit against the ropes, if you don't finish them, right, that boxer with his experience, uh, with his heart and with his tenacity is going to come back and eventually knock you out. And that's exactly 
uh, what happened today uh, to the Bulls. Just an absolute phenomenal job. And, and you start looking uh, at companies like one by one by one. Again, the Bulls, you know, could have retreated, right? They could have confirmed. Uh, they could have confirmed Tesla and brought it all the way down to 880. They didn't. They let Tesla off the ropes. They let Tesla come back out swinging, and ultimately Tesla really knocked out. Again, we'll get all, all the individual pivots, but you start seeing that over and over again. Again, same thing. They had an opportunity to reclaim the 10-day on Amazon and go all the way down to the 2480s. Again, they didn't do so. They had a chance to really crush NVIDIA. NVIDIA was at the bottom of this range, guys. Look how many times. You're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're talking about two and a half weeks of on the bottom of the range. They could have easily taken down NVIDIA and taken all the way down to the 330s. And again, they defended and went higher. Say what you want about BYND. Again, same thing. The Bulls just did an absolute fantastic job reclaiming all levels. Uh, Boeing, again, up and down Boeing all week. And again, look, Boeing could have gotten murdered. And, and they held the previous day's low on a 600-point decline in the Dow. Uh, again, this is you, you can literally go from chart after chart after chart. Uh, the moral of the story is the Bulls did an absolute phenomenal job. And it's going to be a very, very tough time for the, for the Bears uh, going into tomorrow if we start uh, confirming really higher channels. So uh, look at where we are. You know, if you look at uh, every single uh, every single ETF, kind of where we are. Again, great job, great job by and on the S and P. We'll use the spiders as a barometer. Uh, they held this rising 50-day moving average, reclaimed the 20, and literally one day away from reclaiming the five. Again, shortest-term sentiment. Uh, you look at the IWM, and the IWM had ton. I mean, I'm talking a ton of put buying on Friday going into this week. Ridiculous amounts of money being put on the line. We gapped up lower, and again, same thing. We reclaimed uh, this rising support, and we reclaimed, you know, we reclaimed the 10, and now we're a step away from reclaiming the five. Uh, you look at, for example, the biotechs, right? They could have finished the biotechs, literally finished the biotechs, confirming the 50-day moving average, and they would have been a swan dive. They they couldn't even take out the previous day's low. Again, you can make a case: was it latency? Did people want to make sure their prices were, you know, were holding up? Did they trust? The, the, the data that we're getting disseminated from their uh, financial provider, whatever the case did, again, fumble ruski, baby, fumble ruski. Uh, the Bears, they lost. They just, it just, in reality, they lost. Again, nothing is guaranteed tomorrow, but again, if you, you know, if you look at the charts, and I, I, I really encourage you know, traders to look at a lot of charts today, you'll see the same thing. Uh, stocks reclaiming one way or another into supply, and all they do, again, if they're, unless there's some really horrific uh, corona news overnight, right? Um, you know, you gotta, you gotta like the action on the upside tomorrow. Uh, again, more Fed uh, intervention in the middle of the day. They still talked about more stimulus. Um, so you got a, a really good recipe uh, going into tomorrow's session uh, for the bull case. And again, when you look at the one thing, what I like, and here's kind of going back to last week. When the Dow went down 1,800 points, right, 1,800, and then the next day, a lot of the beta names gave it up as well. One thing we, we, we noted, I forgot if I actually mentioned it on, uh, on the video, we, you know, we were talking about in the, in the webinar, that I didn't see any really aggressive put buying in beta from Thursday to Friday going into this week. We didn't see anything aggressive. The one thing that we did see aggressive was when the market gapped down today, okay, and the NASDAQ was down a lot, uh, and the Dow was down six, seven hundred points. You started seeing, I'm talking about aggressive rinse and repeat buyers coming in and out of money weekly calls coming in on Tesla, coming in on Zoom, coming in on Amazon. Amazon was a monster. You saw the 180 call buyers step in on BYND, you saw the 195 call buyer coming in on Boeing, you saw uh, 2 came in with calls. So Really good stuff for the Bulls. Really, really good stuff. And for tomorrow, obviously, any gap up today uh, needs to be bought on rising 60-minute support. Uh, and again, it's going to take a really, really aggressive effort from the Bears uh, to really seize uh, the day again for tomorrow. So uh, obviously, uh, let's talk about the pivots. Uh, again, for, I know a lot of you guys did have issues, and I get that. Again, there's nothing you can do when you don't trust the quotes and you don't trust the prices because they're coming in sometimes 20, 30 seconds late. 
uh, and you're, you know, you can't put in orders. Again, there's just nothing you can do. It's just part of the game. Uh, but again, some sick moves, like really, really sick moves here. Here is the first, you know, here is the first sneaky really pivot on Tesla. Uh, 918.50, 919. If it builds just for the initial cash flow, 923, 925, right? So here is Tesla, right? So here is the 919 area right over here. So I felt it was going to go right here, 923, 925. And it did that. And then slowly but surely, you started seeing r ridiculous weekly call buyers coming in. 960s, the 1000s, the 1020s, the 1050s. We even saw the 1100s come in for Friday's expiration. And you just, I just kept on putting in more levels over and over again, over and over again. So well, I said, well, if this thing takes out 927, it could go uh, to 954. If it takes out 954, it could go to 970. If it takes out 970, I said, there's a shot. It goes to 1000, 1008 today. Uh, it went to 990, uh, 998, just, uh, just an insane move uh, by Tesla. Uh, again, it started out so innocently with Zoom as well. 226.40 needs to build for initial initial cash flow spike. To say that is an exaggeration. So here's the 26.40, and the initial spike went to 228.229. And once it started reclaiming 229, we knew this 332 was going to be a big, big area, right? Excuse me, 232. Again, you started seeing 250 call buyers come in, 260 call buyers come in. I think I even saw 275. I might be wrong, but really, really aggressive. And again, it took out this macro area, 232, uh, and just really exploded. And it went all the way uh, to the 238 level uh, before it came in, and then it really closed at the high. So really, really aggressive move. Uh, there as well. Uh, DOCU again added to the NASDAQ 100. 156 needs to build. Here was DOCU. All right, so here was the 160 right here. 160 stock just absolutely exploded. Went to uh, 164. Uh, Qs again, they tested Friday's low and then they took them right back, right? Right back. This is that was the first sign that you knew there wasn't going to be a follow through because again, Bears just dropped the ball. Uh, here is definitely the point mover of the day. Uh, again, it started out so innocently. Again, we started seeing the weeklies come in. Uh, the 2580s, the 2600s, the 2620s, the 2700 weekly calls. Uh, 2534 needs to build. Here is 2534 on Amazon. Here is the initial push, right? 2534. Uh, it went to 2544 and then it confirmed 2544 and went all the way up to uh, 2584. You're talking about a $50 move. And here's the great part the stock hasn't even confirmed yet. Tomorrow, if it starts confirming the five day, then this thing has a moonshot at 2608, 2616. So well, Amazon still needs to confirm. It hasn't even confirmed macro yet. So, really, really big move there. Uh, ZM going nuts. Nice spike on uh, nice spike on DOCU. Uh, again, this and it started out so innocently, right? Buyers coming in for the 960 calls. Stock went to a thousand. Huge move there. Uh, 105, and, and this is one of the very few shorts that actually uh, did work out. Uh, Roku, if it builds below, can flush 105 as Friday's low. Again, not a huge move because again the market rebounded. But here's the 105, and it went all the way down to well, I say all the way down, obviously modestly uh, to 103 and change. But again, a pivot is a pivot is a pivot. Uh, so Tesla document new highs. Uh, so yeah, so and I kept on giving spots here. I go look uh, now the big macro area is 956. It really needs to get at that change. Now we're seeing aggressive thousand call buyers coming in, and it took out 956 again, went to a thousand. Uh, BYND, beautiful close, perfect, perfect close, 152, big spot, needs to build. So uh, BYND uh, closed right above the 152 area to 154. Why is that important? Because again, this is my whole point. It confirmed the five-day moving average. And now, you know, if it starts taking out this candle here, you could see a move back to 52-week high. So big move on BYND as well. Again, here we go, 965 next. Uh, any close in 970 gets you a thousand. Went went to a thousand. That's exactly what happened. Uh, and that's it there. Uh, again, 2580s on Amazon. Big big move there. A uh, thousand. Here comes a thousand. Oh my God. 154 close. Uh, 154 close on uh, BYND. So you got a lot of aggressive action, but more important. Uh, then the individual action today was a, a very, very definitive shift in sentiment. So again, when you're going into 
uh, any trading day, you need to have an opinion, right? Obviously, you need to have an, uh, a game plan. But once you have so much information, we always talk about the ability to collect data, right? Like, again, all this information I've gotten through the trading day, through the five, six, seven hours, I was sitting there watching all the action. And the most important part is not to jump the gun for tomorrow. But the, the key to the game is you have your spots, you wait for that confirmation. If they gap up, you wait for that opening range high. And depending on how much range you have from opening range high to the next supply zone, that's when you get more aggressive or get more passive on your tier side. So guys, have a great uh, night, everybody. Happy Monday, and with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.